Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Iron Africa with me, Georgia Calvin Smith. Tonight, at least 23 people are killed after a blaze tears through makeshift shelters at a Muslim religious retreat in Senegal. Dozens more were injured in the fire. Others were hurt in the stampede it caused amongst panicked worshippers. Also, a battle between local producers and importers of frozen chicken heats up in Benin. Poultry is big business in the country, but with a huge profit to be made by buying from Europe and selling on to Nigeria, local poultry farmers feel edged out. And we head to Ethiopia, where in Addis Ababa, 14 months after a new light rail system's opening, many residents in the city's network of overcrowded minibuses and taxis think that they remain the only option. The huge infrastructure project hasn't delivered the easing of traffic congestion that they'd hoped for. Now, at least 23 people have died in a blaze that tore through a religious retreat in Senegal. The fire triggered a stampede when it broke out near the town of Medina Gunas in the southeast. President Macky Sall is due to head to the site on Friday. For more on what happened, we're joined by Sophia Christensen. She's in Dakar for us. Sophia, do we have any more idea of the circumstances of the fire? Uh, no, not really. So the fire broke out yesterday afternoon near the southeastern village of Medina Gunas. And this is a site where thousands of Muslim pilgrims had come from across the region to gather for an annual spiritual retreat. Once it started, it spread rapidly by a combination of strong winds and makeshift shelters. And firefighters really struggled to bring the situation under control. By evening, almost 80% of the campsite was destroyed. 23 people have now been confirmed dead and many others injured. So do we know what happened? We what may have ca do... caused the fire? Yeah, no. So authorities will open an investigation, but for the time being, we still do not know what may have caused it. There is speculation that it could have been triggered by a cigarette bud or by the explosion of a gas cylinder. Although it is worth noting that this happened in an extremely hot and very, very arid part of the country where small fires are not an uncommon occurrence. And in fact, before the event, the organization committee and the village mayor had voiced concern about the lack of proper water and electricity supplies at the campsite. But infrastructure that was previously promised by the authorities to improve the situation was never delivered. Thanks very much, Sophia Christensen, there for us in Dakar. Well, at least 97 people are missing after their boat capsized off the coast of Libya on Thursday. Around 120 migrants had originally been on board when the vessel fell apart not far from Tripoli. The local Coast Guard believes all the passengers were African, of whom only about two dozen have been rescued. Since the beginning of the year, around 600 migrants have died or gone missing in Libya's waters as they try and make the dangerous journey to Europe. Before that, migrants risk brutal abuse at the hands of people smugglers, including being forced into slavery. Some who've witnessed the appalling trade and returned home are still traumatized by what they've been through. I will not advise any Gambian or any citizen as a black man to take this journey, because what I experienced there is just like a slavery is running in Libya for the blacks. They said slavery is finished, but they <sighs> Slavery is existing in Libya every fucking day and night. They sell people just like the way they sell goats and rams. They will price you you are sitting. You cannot do nothing there. Political tensions in Zambia continue to ratchet up over the arrest this week of opposition leader Hichilema Hakainda. His lawyers and family say that orders have been given to prevent them from seeing him. Hakainda was taken forcibly from his home on Tuesday and charged with treason for allegedly obstructing President Edgar Lungu's motorcade. Hakainda's UPND party says that he's the victim of political persecution 
Ian Lungu are old rivals, and he accuses the leader of having rigged a victory in last year's polls. While police deny refusing Hakainda access to his rights, and also claim that they've not been politically pressured to pursue him. Well, frozen chicken is a hot ticket for business in Benin. The country imports around 150,000 tonnes of poultry from Europe every year. And there's big money to be made in then exporting much of that to neighbouring Nigeria. However, for local producers, the market is less than welcoming. They feel that they're being edged out and that there is little interest from the government in supporting the sale of homegrown chicken. Massive imports of chicken from Europe and Brazil have led to a fall in prices in Benin. These men have been importing frozen chicken from the EU for several years now. These impressive chicken legs come from Poland. The people here like big chicken legs, and in the EU they make sure big ones are produced. All these imports mean there are fewer and fewer local poultry farmers. Constant Kinoucon only sells eggs now. His chicken meat would be too expensive compared to the imported produce. Benin's government is not doing anything because it makes more than 70 million euros a year from the imports, which are taxed when they enter the country. That's 2% of the nation's budget. In fact, 80% of the imports are then exported to Benin's vast neighbour, Nigeria, and its 186 million inhabitants. These packs of frozen chicken that are lying in the sun are about to embark on a long journey in a lorry that is not refrigerated. Frozen chicken in hot temperatures is not ideal, but these imports have represented a huge blow for many of Benin's poultry farmers. Well, Ethiopia's electric light railway system was only inaugurated last year. It was supposed to be a game changer for the capital. But despite the government's promises that it would make a massive difference to road congestion, many living in Addis Ababa are less than impressed by the impact it's had on getting around the city. Long queues for the minibus, still a common sight in Addis Ababa. That's despite a modern tramway that started operating in the Ethiopian capital more than a year ago. Not everybody is impressed with the $475 million project. You can wait for 30 minutes for the tram to come. They promised it would arrive every six minutes when it first began operating. The Chinese-funded tramway is the first in sub-Saharan Africa. It was hailed as a major step in the country's development and is now used by 120,000 people every day. But the trams, just like the buses, are under strain. So with this number of trains, it's totally impossible to alleviate the transportation problem. But we can see that it has uh, played its own positive role because we have uh, managed to transport uh, more than 50 million. Of the 41 light rail cars, a third are currently undergoing repairs. How come they malfunction within just a year? They should buy good cars that work well. And they should limit the number of passengers in each train. The tram is cheaper than the bus and is supposed to be faster. But Addis has a rapidly growing population of 4 million plus. And now it's not just the so-called blue donkey minibuses that are overcrowded and delayed. Well, that's it for Eye on Africa for now. Remember, you can always get more news and headlines from around the world by checking out our website. That's France24, www.france24.com. On our front page there, following all the latest in the French election. But for more from the African continent, make sure you join us again next time if you can. Take care. The French will elect a new head of state on April 23rd and May 7th. Eleven candidates are in the running.
Who will be the next French president? Follow the French presidential election on France 24 and France24.com.